How's it going guys? Jerry here and welcome to week 2 of the National Pokemon Association. This week we're going up against the Beast Pokeballer and the Dallas Star Raptors. But before this battle goes underway, I want to go ahead and mention that this is actually going to be post commentary as opposed to live commentary just because my computer did not like the settings that I chose to record the actual battle. We were dropping so many frames and once fully edited, this battle would be unbearable to watch. So I'm doing you guys a favor by doing post commentary even though it's not my usual thing. So I'm deeply sorry guys, I really am, I have no control over this, I am deeply sorry, hopefully next week we'll be back with another live comp for the NPA, but until then I hope you guys enjoy this battle with the Beast Pokeballer. Alrighty, so Luke decides to lead off with his Galvantula, and I decide to lead off with my Infernape, but instead of going for the fire move, I instead opt to go for a U-turn for a little initiative, as Luke decides to switch out and go into his Cofagrigus, which of course is going to eat up this U-turn with no trouble at all because it resists and it's just super bulky. Funny enough that we do land a crit, which of course makes all the difference in the world. So now in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I went for U-turn, I get initiative, let's go into Tornadus because I know for a fact that two Hurricanes are enough to knock out this here Cofagrigus. Now, Hurricane is a double-edged sword because it does lots of damage, but its accuracy is pretty terrible, as you can tell from this screen here. We miss a Hurricane, which is a little unfortunate, and then Luke goes for a Paint Split, which of course, it doesn't really matter because both our HP bars are practically full. So I go for another Hurricane and luckily enough we do land this one doing over half on this here Cofagrigus. So I decide to place all my bets and I decide to go for another Hurricane and unfortunately we miss a Hurricane. Our second miss in this battle, a little unfortunate I know. So he goes for a pain split and then he gets some health back but it's not really an issue because we do have regenerator we can always opt to switch out and get the health back we go for a third hurricane missing twice in a row a little unfortunate he goes for a willow it connects this time and we are burned a little unfortunate but again we can always opt to switch out and regain some of that health not a big deal so we missed twice in a row and i'm telling myself i can't miss again but lo and behold i miss for a third time in a row very unfortunate and at this time I am very frustrated and honestly I'm feeling pretty defeated right now. Pretty defeated. So at this point in time I feel like Tornadus here is a little useless so I decided to switch out and go out into my Infernape and just shoot off Fire Blast. That's pretty much the only thing I could do here. So he goes for a Hex and we managed to take that pretty well. Surprisingly enough because Infernape really isn't the bulkiest mom but we take that pretty well. And then we go for a Fire Blast here because it's going to do around the same damage as Hurricane. We land, a hur we land a Hurricane, we land a Fire Blast, leaving it just under half, and he goes for a Psychic, something that caught me completely off guard. Normally, Coppergrigus don't run anything like that, and this particular set did catch me off guard. So kudos to you, Luke. It really did catch me off guard. So Infernip goes down, which is unfortunate because it is my win con. That Bisharp is a threat, and one of my win cons is down for the count. So I got into Shaman, going for a Seed Flare, hoping and praying that one is enough to knock out this Cofagrigus. And yes, in fact, it is enough to knock out the Cofagrigus. So down it goes. One of his walls is down, and now Luke and I are steady at 5 and 5 apiece. So he goes out into his Galvantula here, and there's no way I'm staying out into Shaman. So I switch out, and I go out into my Grimlock, the Tyranitar here, because I know for a fact that with the stand-up, and Tyranitar's boosted special defense, we can take any one hit from this here, Galvantula. Now, I know that this particular scenario made no sense because it was a perfect case for Luke to set up a sticky web. He has a sticky web up and I have no hazard control. A little unfortunate. So I go for the Mega Evo here. We have Mega Titar and I go for a Dragon Dance. He goes for a Volt Switch, but we eat that up very well because of the sand being up. And he's gonna go out into his, I think the Dawn Fan. Yeah, Junkman the Dawn Fan, there it is. So we went for a D-Dance here, and then I'm going to opt to crunch the next turn. Now this is a little scary because I know for a fact that Tyranitar isn't the bulkiest Pokemon and Dawnfan actually hits like a truck, so I'm kind of nervous here as to if I'm going to live an Earthquake or not. We go for a crunch, we get the defense drop, he goes for an Earthquake, oh we go for a crunch, get the defense drop, and then he goes for an Earthquake. And we live on 40 HP, which is awesome. So we go for another crunch, and I'm pretty confident that this crunch is going to knock it out, and this, the defense drop isn't even going to matter because we end up getting a critical hit. So down goes Donphan, both of his walls are down for the count, and he's going to go out into Mega Man the Metacham. Now this is where I completely zoned out. I forgot that Metacham had two forms of priority, Fake Out and Bullet Punch. And yes, if you guys don't already know, we're going to take a Bullet Punch straight to the face. I became a little cocky, and I completely forgot about Bullet Punch, and down goes Mega Titar, and at this point, I am feeling extremely defeated. 
So what I do is I go into Yan Mega because I did some calcs before the match and I know for a fact that Metachamp cannot take an Air Slash from a Yan Mega. So he switches out into his Magmortar and Luke plays this brilliantly. So he stays in with Magmortar and most Magmortar that I encounter are usually choice in some fashion, either Specs or Scarfed. And he plays this magnificently. So he goes for a Thunderbolt here. I go for Protect trying to scout what he's going to do. He goes for a Thunderbolt here. So I decide, okay, he's locked into Thunderbolt. He's locked. In so I switch out. I go into Shaman thinking that he's locked into Thunderbolt. And he surprises me yet again. You'll see later on in the video that he is not choice in some fashion. He's actually either Assault Vest or Expert Belt, as you guys can tell here. And the reason why Magmortar actually outsped Shaman is because of the Sticky Web. So down goes Shaman. Luke played that brilliantly. Kudos to you, Luke. Kudos to you. So I go out into my barricade here, the Slowbro. And it doesn't really matter the webs are out because Slowbro is slow to begin with. It's in the name. He goes for a Thunderbolt and we eat that up thanks to the Assault Vest. We go for a Scald. Enough to knock out this here Magmortar. So now Luke is down to his last three Pokemon, and I'm last to my I'm I'm down to my last three as well. So out comes Galvantula, and I actually let the time run out in this play here. I was trying to decide what to do, and I lost track of time, and I lost the uh, counter. So it, it automatically went for Scald. And if I had gone for Fire Blast, this Galvantula would have been out of my life, which would have made this which would have made this battle a lot more easier. So down goes Slowbro to a Thunder. I'm going to go ahead and send out Yan Mega. And this was another stupid play. Instead of going for Protect, I went for Bug Buzz. I have no idea why I went for Bug Buzz as opposed to Protect. I mean, the battle at this point in time was pretty much done because both a Soccer Punch from a Bisharp and a Bullet Punch from a Metachamp was enough to knock on my Yan Mega. I did some calcs after this match and it really didn't matter if I gone for Protect. So he goes for a Sucker Punch on my Tornadus, my last Pokemon. Down goes Tornadus, and Luke wins this match in a 3-0 fashion. A little unfortunate. Kudos to you, Luke. That was an excellent played match. You pretty much outplayed me in every sense of the word. So Luke honestly deserves, a vic deserves this victory. If I can let words out of my mouth. Luke deserves this victory. And unfortunately, guys, we are down one battle. So now we are 1-1 one one in the NPA. And Luke is 2-0. He deserves this 2-0 victory. And uh, yeah, I do apologize for losing and I do apologize for making this mistakes. Um, but even so, I hope you guys still support the Landorus all the way. Don't worry guys, it's early on in this uh, league. We still have many battles to come and I just want you guys to continue to support the Landorus like you guys did in Season 1. But if you guys enjoyed the battle, then please go ahead and drop a like down below. Likes are always appreciated and I'll also provide Luke's links in the description so you guys can go and check them out. And uh, yeah. Um, again, I do apologize for losing this match guys, but don't worry, we're going to come back stronger and better than ever. But with that being said guys, that's it for me. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Jerry, and until next time, stay awesome.